Austin 360 Studio Sessions, presented by Bud Light. This is our first episode of 2018, and I'm crazy excited for today's guest. We have Tim Montana. <laughs> Little bit rock and roll, a lot of country. Playing at the Belmont here in Austin, Texas. So if you're lucky enough to live in Austin, you can catch him at 8 o'clock at the Belmont. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, congratulations, you get a concert. I'll be back afterwards to do an interview. In the meantime, here's Tim Montana. This is a song about smoking weed, drinking whiskey. My mom's pissed. Thank you for having us. We uh, drove through like 13 hours of a monsoon yesterday. It's hard to do when you're drunk. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I was drunk in the back. But uh, anyway, I'm Tim Montana. Um, yeah, this next song, that last song was called Weed and Whiskey, obviously. That is a song we wrote with one of our favorite Texans, a guy named Billy Gibbons. He's got a little old band from Texas called ZZ Top. <laughs> Getting to work with one of my heroes has been an honor. And uh, the first time I met him, I'll tell you guys a story, was September 11th. 2013, or September, yeah, September 11, 2013. My mom had breast cancer at the time, and I owe Texas a great debt of gratitude because she was at uh, MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. Best treatment center on planet Earth. I gotta thank those guys. 
But uh, she called me in the studio that day and she said, hey, I got to ring the bell and I got to walk out of MD Anderson cancer free. And I was like, holy smokes. And no shit, like five minutes later, I get a call and I said, hey, Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top got your info and he's gonna come work on this song with you. And I'm like, God, today is a great day. It doesn't suck, thank you. And so Mr. Gibbons walks in and I had this little idea called This Beard Came Here to Party and we wrote it, we recorded it. And he left, and I thought, man, I'll, I'll never see that guy again, but that's more than I ever thought I'd get, is to get to work with my hero one time. But uh, fate had a different plan for us, and this baseball team, I don't know anything about baseball, but this baseball team was growing beards on the East Coast, and uh, so they picked up the song, and they won the World Series, the Boston Red Sox. The next thing I know, the song is like blown up in Boston, and I had to like educate myself on an RBI and uh, figure out what all that kind of stuff is. But uh, this one's called, This Beard Came Here to Pate. <laughs> So we've covered weed, whiskey, and facial hair. I think it's time for a love song now, guys. This is a brand new song, and um, we haven't put this out yet, but I think we're gonna end up putting this out this year. And uh, if I'm gonna approach a love song, I'm not, I don't know, I'm just, I just feel like it's not a subject I sing a lot about, so I wanna do it very unique, and I just kinda talked about driving my wife crazy in this song, you know? Uh, 
she's living with a man mama wasn't done raising. And I thought that was like, wow, because my mom, when we got married, she's like, finally, someone can finish raising him. <laughs> so we put that in the song. And uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to put out this year. I wrote it with this guy named Nathan Chapman. He's an awesome uh, redheaded record producer in Nashville. But uh, it's called Save the Day. Ready? Oh, wait, I start the song. Ready? <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to tell you I don't know what I'd do without you. You're everything I got in this life, yeah. And baby, you complete me the way you just let me be me. You're everything I'm not, and that's all right. When I'm feeling low, you get me high. When I get lost, I just look in your eyes, hey. It up ten different ways, but you save the day. You save the day. You're amazing. Living with a man, mama wasn't done raising. I mess it up ten different ways, but you save the day. You save the day. From a beautiful stranger to a game changer. From a face at the bar to the beat of my heart. You're a I can't believe you're mine You shine in the dark Yeah, you shine in the dark Hey, pretty lady I ain't done driving you crazy I mess it up ten different ways But you save the day You save the day You're amazing Living with a man mama wasn't done raising I mess it up ten different ways But you save the day in your eyes hey pretty lady i ain't done driving you crazy i mess it up 10 different ways but you save the day you save the day hey, you're amazing living with a man mama wasn't done raising i mess it up 10 different ways but you save the day you save the day That song's gonna give me some brownie points. Thank you guys again so much. I'm Tim Montana. These are the, the wild and mighty shrednecks here from Nashville, Tennessee. All right, this next song is our, our last single that we put out. And uh, this song came about um, on an evening during the holidays last year where we went to a White Castle after uh, drinking a lot that evening. And uh, we, we caught a ride to White Castle and uh, or not White Castle, what am I saying White Castle for? Waffle House, Waffle House. I was thinking of that movie. Me and my friend Kumar went to this place called White Castle. <laughs> Neil Patrick Harris shit got out of hand real fast. <laughs> hey, Neil. <laughs> but anyway, so we went to Waffle House, and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we had this lady wait on us, and she was, like, really upset about something. Like I said, it's almost Christmas, and she's like, man, those guys that, so that went in front of you uh, bothered to tip me, like, one cent, and they ordered all this food and, like, harassed the lady. So we like dumped our wallets out on the table and it was like to the tune of maybe two or three hundred dollars. And I'm not rich by any means. So my wife was like, hey, dude, you got three kids. Uh, great, you gave that lady money, but uh, you're gonna have to go find that money again. But uh, so the next day we went to the writer's room. It was actually my birthday. And um, 
so we went to the writer's room. We're like, what are we going to write about? And it's like, man, last night I got in a lot of trouble because we were living like hillbilly rich. And then we're like, man, that's a good title. Let's talk about like, you know, some idiot like me being hillbilly rich and how I'd burn that money faster than MC Hammer. So uh, this one's called Hillbilly Rich. Thank you, guys. Oh, wait, I started this one too. Got it early. Here we go, here we go. Got it. Brain fart, brain fart, brain fart. Redo. I want to ride in a row. Laid back street ballin', sippin' on Perignon Swimmin' in women, feelin' bad to the bone I'm talking wine on the stone But I'm just a poor song, bitch Dreamin' hillbilly rich One, two, three, four Dollar tips at the Waffle House Give my mama a bigger double wide Hell, I quit my job Flip off my boss Buy the whole bar drinks all night I'd be that country monkey Ain't it something rocking camo Living like a city slicking Mother freaking star of the show Need a little bit of money, honey. Oh, my lord, where's my pot of gold at the Waffle House? Oh, my lord, I just need a little bit of money, honey. Oh, my lord, where's my pot of gold? I want to ride in a row. so much are we ready to chat we are we're so ready we're gonna chat it up i just love that i missed my cue but mostly because i was enjoying myself so much it's good. It's a good thing, right? i was like yeah do you guys want to play 10 more songs <laughs> okay great I, we're good right oh right so tonight they play the belmont if you're watching us on facebook live or anywhere where you can oh. <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> It was. Yeah, that was me. Uh, if you are able to, they are playing the Belmont in Austin, Texas tonight, so you can catch more and get more Tim Montana live. Tim Montana, I didn't realize how funny you are. Um, some people don't agree with that. <laughs> Your wife? This female in Nashville named Mrs. Montana thinks you're, thinks, <laughs> thinks you're full of it. <laughs> yeah, and yet, oh, hold on, we got a mic for you. Perfect. Oh. Now we are in trouble. I have I have concerns, but mostly I'm like, well, it's cool. It's cool. We're Our company. Now. We got two mics. Perfect. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you guys back home is a like this is one of the greatest noon LOL and music studio sessions in a minute. So thank you, Tim Montana and company. Oh, well, thank you for having us. Yay! 
Definitely. Uh, I wanted to start by talking about your work with uh, ZZ Top. I didn't realize the whole story about what a great day you had the day that your mom walks out of MD Anderson. That was a really great day. And like, yeah. and I, I tell that story, and sometimes you tell stories on stage every night, and you end up adding to it and embellishing, and then I'm just like, wow, that's the one story that there's no bullshit. And I actually forget that uh, Rod Essig, the vice president of CAA, which is one of the biggest talent agencies, I've been passed on by every agency in Nashville. He came in that same day and signed me to a booking deal. And I, I forgot about like the trifecta that my mom's gonna live. I get to work with Billy Gibbons. Oh yeah, and I'm signed with CAA. I was like, that's a really good whatever day that was, Wednesday. <laughs> Solid, you know? Been chasing it ever since. <laughs> It's always a random Wednesday. Right. That is awesome. So wait, tell me about that. Uh, a lot of people had made the mistake of passing on you, and then... I have a name and list. I'm going to publish on my website, so you guys know where to send the bad letters. TimMontana.com, correct? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So he called and was just like, wait, I'm, I'm all in? No, he just came in and was like, I was like showcasing for people or setting up showcase, and everyone's like, oh, it's too rock and roll, it's too this, they're headbanging, it's distracting, oh, they got a guy playing the double bass drum, oh. and then uh, all it's too the, music. Yeah, yeah, it's too, it's too real. I, oh, did I just brag on myself. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> my head's like getting bigger. It's gonna swell. Uh, just do it on camera. Yeah. Um, but then, like, the biggest guy I'd, I'd met with, it just walks in and is like, I'm going to sign you on a handshake deal right now. And I'm like, is it is this easy? Like, wow, what have I been doing for the last three years? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is yeah, awesome. it, was, it was a really good day. And they've, uh, you know, they've been booking us ever since. And we were, you know, we're a real small fish in a real big pond. But it's like they believe in us. And if you find champions out there that believe in you, and you just work your ass off and never quit and say yes to everything. And it's like... Sometimes our agents look at the map and they're like, no way these guys will pull it off. Because you're looking at bus driving champions right here. Look around me, right here. This is a team driving some bitch right here. Multi-talented. Yesterday we had one of our first big flubs of touring and driving. Tell us everything. So it was like, there was a lot of water. It was like monsoon. And we're all like, oh God, I'm gonna get my feet wet. Because we're like, it's like, I don't know, was it midnight, one in the morning? I don't know, we were tired. And as we go around, so then we figured out like the jump in the back and then go around, but like I'm very diligent about like my sprinter has got to be perfect, everything, oil changed, I'm really into like mechanics of it, how it works. And we all miss the fact that the diesel pump was still in the sprinter as we drive off and I just see this big green thing like, snap, and go back and I'm like, holy shit! And <laughs> nothing. Nothing was damaged, believe it or not. So TJ, you uh, it's kind of a team fail because I'm usually Mr. Daddy that's running around like, watch your speed, blah, 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 pull the pump up, oh, do this, do that. And I just kind of got in nonchalant. And, you know, so sorry to Love's Truck Stop about uh, taking out that diesel pump. I owe you, we got you. I don't know where to begin other than why. This is why you should maintain your control freak status. Yes. See what happens? <laughs> Things are just, just crumbling. Relax for a minute. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> Later they're gonna That's be like, it. we hate her. <laughs> We're never going back there. Uh, I love that you mentioned your music is real because, let me pull up really quick. Um, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, you can post questions in our Facebook live stream and I can read them. Only if they're inappropriate, please. Only if they're inappropriate. This one's appropriate. So Amber Rebold, who's actually in this audience. Hey girl. Oh no. Hey Amber. Show yourself. All she's right. Set. See, she's here. She said, Realest love song ever. Oh, wow, thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just. I'm, it's a good one. Yeah. Amber wants to know how long you guys have been married. We've been married so long, I don't look both ways when I cross the street. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> More so, real talk. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, God, I just walk out blindly. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. My wife is my hero, and she's like worked this crazy corporate job to like be able to support her low life husband over the years and finally we're getting to the point where I'm like, look, my business pays for itself, what's up now? And she's like, well that doesn't pay the mortgage. And I'm like, you got it. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, so we've been married uh, 10 or 11 years and uh, I met her at Tootsie's. I was a door guy and a bar back at a famous honky tonk and one night she came in and I'd wear this big 10 gallon cowboy hat and uh, girls would come and hit on you, but like I had to stay till five. So there was like no luck. They'd always go home with some douchebag, like they would just say, like, and I'm like, hey, I'm the nice guy. I've got a job and I'm only half drunk because I'm working. Yeah. And uh, so, so one night this girl comes in and she's like hitting on me and I was really crabby. And I was just like, oh, just another fling that's gonna go away. And I'm, you know, no luck for old Timmy boy. 
<laughs> and the next night, the same chick comes in, and I'm just like, no way. Like, she's actually into me. And uh, so then she laughs. She tells people that I called her at 5 a.m. was like, hey, do you want to hang out? She's like, no. God, no. I see an old 5 a.m. call. Hey, can I come to your hotel? Dude, it worked out. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> Been married over 10 years, yeah. three kids. $500 later, I'm a married man. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> Let's go back to how much you love her, which is why you wrote yes, the love yeah, song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Circle but, it back so you can go home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so she went back to California. She was a traveling salesperson, and I went to California to stay with my brother, and she came down and visited, and I was, remember complaining to my mom. She was there. I'm like, Mom, I, don't, I like, haven't had a serious girlfriend ever. And Keep in mind, I'm like 21. I'm like, I'm just, I just want to get married and settle down. And then the next day, her and I were like wrestling, and I may have held her down on a picnic table and put this like water, fl flower water thing over her and like kind of waterboarded her, but she was like laughing. <laughs> and we were having a blast. And like my mom walked up to me afterwards and she's like, Be careful for what you wish for, my son. <laughs> I was like, Eh, that's very <laughs> weird. <laughs> anyway, like six, six months later, long story short, we got married at Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. During one of my sets, so our wedding pictures are awesome. Like, half the crowd is my family, and the other half are just drunk people. They're like, is this for real? Like, dudes are just in our... It was amazing. So we've been married ever since. We have three beautiful children, and she puts up with me, man. She's living with a man mama wasn't done raising. Uh-huh. That's <laughs> awesome. Keep them laughing, and it's good, you know? No, I think it's good. I'm also like, could you guys please have, like, a 15th anniversary vow renewal concert? Will slash... you guys come to Tootsie's if we do our... Wow, that's a good idea. Right? And then just maybe every five or ten years be like, hey, babe, I'm sorry. But look, we're having fun. And then we can all come and be those half-drunk people cheering in the background. Yes. She still complains that we've never had a honeymoon. And she's like, hey, my honeymoon isn't backstage in Kadat, Wisconsin. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, honey, we'll travel. We got my friends with me. <laughs> just keep an eye on the gas pump and we're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's... I'm um, taking us to our next question. Unless I, I'm using my phone, great. Please hold. She's liking tweets. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> What'd you have for breakfast, Tim? Uh, these guys try to feed me pizza, but I'm trying to be a good boy, so I had a breakfast bar, but I also packed four breakfast bars, so I'd have breakfast every day, and three are missing. <laughs> Would you like a microphone, sir? Yeah, can you, sir, can you explain the where? <laughs> Should we talk about that? No? Okay. Amy Arnold has a really fun question. Okay. Who's the real live music capital? Austin or Nashville? Ah, uh, that's tough, Tricky. man. Tricky! As they're in Austin. A, there's a lot of live, let me put it this way, there's a lot of live music in Nashville, but I don't feel like that's where you go to see an original band playing original music. You know, if it, I mean, we don't play there a lot because people, it's kind of a tourist destination, but there might be more live music happening in Nashville, but I think like interesting bands that are just like, I don't know, I think come from Texas, you know? All good <laughs> things. I'm never invited back to Tennessee. No, I was just going to say, <laughs> Tim Montana for president, people. This. <laughs> It's yes, diplomacy. Yes. Like, it's great music Four everywhere. Scorn. Everywhere. <laughs> Always. Yay, music. Um, Rick Hoffman says, love to see you back on the boat again. Um, oh, no. Okay, great. Uh, how about a jet ski, pal? <laughs> 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 you and I had an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Gabe Hammond says, keep rocking them, Tim. Thank you. And let's see. Doo, I'm doo. waiting for that inappropriate friend of mine to be like, you're a loser. <laughs> I... I <laughs> Cut your hair, hippie! Hey! Let's see if your mom's on here. Let's see. They do a lot of talking for us. Uh, sorry, it's my phone is acting. We gotta turn it up, yelled at. We got it back. Uh, Debbie Black says Austin is the music capital. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. I, sure. <laughs> uh, Joshua Standard says he saw you guys live when you stole the show from Wheeler Walker. Oh, I don't know if the audio picked it up. There's some, mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> the guys are like, that's right, that's right. I'm like, carry on. <laughs> you know, tell us more. That brings me to, tell us more about being on tour. What's the most fun part about being on tour in the sprinter? Um, I don't know. I just love, I grew up rural Montana, off the grid, so I never traveled. I just kind of lived in this little bubble. And it was awesome. You know, at the time, I didn't realize that I was jealous of other kids that got to go to movies and dates and stuff, so I was kind of stuck in the woods, but like getting to travel and meet humans and see humanity and different cultures like blows my mind. And it's like 
just want to put myself in other people's shoes. I'm not just like some dumb redneck from the woods. You know, it's like I want to experience life, see different people, cultures. I just went to Germany. It like blew my mind. I was like, wow, there's people out there in the world. There's a lot of them. I want to... I want to be friends. Put stuff in their ear like music. <laughs> Kyle's like, whoa! I feel like you're a magical hybrid between like beautiful, authentic redneck and total like hippie zen. Yeah. Let's all smoke weed yeah. in the outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> let's all have a good week. That, right, that's, right. that's what I feel like your music is encouraging. Is we should Thank probably you. all just be happy. Yeah, yeah. Be happy. I'm into that. Be good to one another. Awesome. If there's one thing that you would say, oh, no, we didn't talk, just one more question. Oh, shoot. I want to talk about, where are the kids? Your wife travels, you travel? Yeah, so. There's three of them? We have, like, we, we had a nanny, and she ended up moving back to Montana, and uh, so, like, juggling the kids, she travels all the time, works her butt off, and uh, and then I do as well. So, like, the other day, like, <laughs> it was pretty funny, because I've got the two-year-old, and he's not even two yet, it'll be two at the end of the month, so almost two, but... Um, so I've got a two-year-old, six-year-old, ten-year-old, and so the ten-year-old's at school, but she has basketball till 4:30. So I'm at a session. I have to race to the school, and then I realize, oh, the other one's not out till 4:30. And the other baby, I just found like a strip mall daycare joint that looked pretty legit. So uh, <laughs> we dropped him off there. He, he's short a kidney, but hey, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, Tim Montana, yeah. I can't wait till you accept your first Grammys, and all of us are like, "Where is these kids? Where is where? Like, uh, did they get an en pair at this it, point?" Yeah, so we're there. They were all over town, and then I like raced back at four thirty to get the other one, and then my wife calls me after this. I was just so like defeated by the day. I was just like, "Oh my god, I can't do this." And she called and she's like, "Hey, you're aware of the Girl Scout meeting at six thirty, right?" It was like seven, and I'm like. Yeah. Ah, and I'm driving around with like vintage guitars in the back that are just crashing into each other. It was just, I'm kind of a shit show when it comes to babysitting. But hey, I love my children and yeah. I try my best. Dad, you did it. <laughs> you did it. They're alive. Right. <laughs> Daddy daycare. Daddy daycare. Hashtag Tim Montana edition. With that, we're going to wrap it up. You guys, thanks to our sponsor, Bud Light. Thanks for tuning in. Again, if you're in Austin, check out Tim Montana at the Belmont. You can always find him at timmontana.com. That's it for this week. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. Woo!